What is going on everybody? We got a lot going on here at the shop, kind of doing a little bit of remodeling, but I wanted to share with you guys a tank that was uh, not too long ago, just riddled with Aptasia and um, kind of felt like it was a, a bit hopeless. I kind of, me personally, I wanted to restart the tank, um, but the customer decided uh, to go another route and they got a fish that cleared up all the Aptasia, but there's a catch. But before we get into that, I kind of want to go over, um, for those of you that aren't familiar, uh, Aptasia, what it is and why it's a nuisance. So let's get into it. But first, I got me a new fish right here that's coming home with me in my tank. I'm really excited. We actually got into our shop. What'd you say, Amira? A hundred? It, it says a hundred, but I counted 105. 105 Bergias that we just got in. Now, Bergias are a type of nudibranch. Let's get a closer look at this. And they eat Aptasia. And they do a really good job because Aptasia is the only thing that they will eat. The problem with them is, you can see how small they are. Um, there are certain fish that will pick them off and eat them. So you gotta be very care careful when you put them in, kinda you know, drop them in by hand or, in air or at nighttime when the fish are sleeping. Uh, also, they don't do really good with uh, good flow, with strong flow, so if you have a lot of flow in your reef tank, these guys will get blown all around. Um, so I'm kind of like, um, I'm 50-50 I'm on the Burgias. I've seen them work for sure, but they only live so long. And like I said, once they eat all the Aptasia, they will die because they have nothing else to eat, which is whatever, I mean, they're, they're, they're doing their job, right? Um, the other catch is they do find themselves down your filtration. So maybe, you know, if you have filter socks or filters that they wouldn't be able to get out of, make sure to make adjustments to that. They do work, but sometimes they do take a bit to notice that they're working and it, it takes a lot. If you wanna see uh, quicker, rapid results, it does take a lot of them. And that's part of the reason why we got 105 of them in. Oh, and the other thing is they're not cheap. I think they're like, they're really expensive. I, I'm not even sure what they're going for. I've seen like from 20 to $30 uh, a piece and that's a lot of money when you add it up. So if you have a significant size tank and you have a significant uh, uh, Aptasia problem, it's gonna cost you a bit to get those burgers in there. And then you might not even see them. You don't even know if they're working. All right, so this is my aquarium at home. It's a little macro algae tank. Nothing I'd take too serious. It's just kind of an experimental fun tank. But if you look right there, that is what we are doing a video on today. That is called an Aptasia. It's basically a little anemone. It's soft, squishy. And there's another one right there. They're littered throughout this whole aquarium. But um, they, be, they can become quite the nuisance. Now what makes these things such a pain in the butt and why so many people dread having them in their tanks is because <laughs> they spread very quickly and if they get next to a coral, see those little things sticking out? They will sting whatever they are close to. So if you have a coral right here, if that little tentacle touches that coral, it'll sting it to the point where that coral will recede and eventually die. Now there are certain corals that can take, um, the stings a little bit better than others, but for the most part, you just don't want these in your tank. They grow very quickly. They get in all over the place. Prime example, there's one growing on a piece of macroalgae. Like that's crazy. Like, look at that. There's one too. All over the algae, they grow on your glass. They grow everywhere. And they come in all different sizes, large, small, small enough to where you might not even see them and know they're there. But they'll get all over the coral and they'll basically sting the coral to the, where the point where the coral will recede and die. They're very hard to get out of your aquarium once you have them in, especially if you have a, a, a large fish load in your tank or you feed heavily, they grow like crazy and replicate like crazy. I mean, they're all over throughout this tank because I do feed this tank a lot because I want the algae to grow. And I really don't care about the Aptasia. It doesn't bother me in this tank just because it is kind of like a whatever tank for me. Now there is some stuff that you can use. You put it in a syringe and you uh, inject it onto the anemone, which can kill them. But that a lot of times just gets them upset and then they end up releasing more stuff. You can see that, that and then that, that Aptasia just ate something right there. See how he's all curled up right there? He ate something, which is great because now he's just gonna spread more. But there are um, ways of taking care of them uh, through chemicals, which you know I'm not gonna get into right now, uh, but fish 
there's a lot of fish out there that will eat these. What brings me to this little guy that I brought home today from the shop, he's out of quarantine. This is a Molly Miller uh, Blenny. And they have been known to go after Aptasia. And because I have Aptasia in here, and because this is my experimental tank, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that uh, to the test. So I'm gonna drop him in this tank. He's a little scared right now, poor buddy. And see if he will clean up this uh, Aptasia in this tank, because I'm really curious because um, well, okay, all right, all right, we won't film him too much longer. Really curious how well he will do on this Aptasia. Um, so, yeah, if he doesn't work, then obviously maybe I'll put some Nudibronx or something in here, some Bergia Nudibronx, um, and uh, maybe I can breed him in this tank too. That'd be kind of cool. Grow a bunch of Aptasia in here and breed some Nudibronx, make a little money. Long story short, you don't want these guys in your tank. They're you don't it, you know they're not inevitable. You can quarantine your corals. You can. Uh, do things to avoid them and I think it's definitely worth to quarantine your corals and to make sure you don't get them in your aquarium because once you have them in your aquarium they're kind of a pain in the butt and you're only left with so many options but we're going to go now transition to a customer who ended up getting a bunch of Aptasia in their tank and they took care of it because all right so here we are at the customer's house and if you guys saw the last video this whole tank was just littered with Aptasia, just Aptasia everywhere, even in the sand. It was intense, it was a lot. Now, what the customer has done since then was get a, uh, a filefish and also a climb butterfly fish. Those are the two new additions. And then the, within a matter of months, look at this. This rock was absolutely covered in Aptasia. Everything is gone off of the rocks. Not a spot of Aptasia anywhere. I mean, these rocks are clean. These fish, there's a reason why they call them utility fish. They did their job. Forgive me that the tank is a little cloudy. I had to clean the glass before I started filming. That coral's never looked better. He's finally probably happy that he's not getting stung. And then all this was just covered in Aptasia. I really encourage you guys to look at that past video. But yeah. Aptasia everywhere and it is clean there was Aptasia all in the sand bed the sand is clean all this was covered you couldn't barely even see the rock it is clean and not only that I think we see hints of coralline algae starting to grow which is a really good sign so yeah so they just got this little climb butterfly which is hiding behind the angelfish right there these guys are absolute beasts. These uh, climb butterfly fish, they are absolute beasts when it comes to eating Aptasia. This is not the first customer that I've dealt with that had success with the climb butterfly fish eating Aptasia. They do a great job. Now, I don't know where the Aptasia eating fowl fish is. Um, I have to keep an eye out. Everybody's kind of hiding because I'm getting ready to do a water change here. But yeah, I haven't been to this tank in months, months, at least six months, uh, maybe even more from what I recall. Um, and this is this looks like a completely different tank and uh, this is this is very good to see now there is still signs of Aptasia so if we look right in here you see a big one hiding underneath the rock and there's also one right there hiding in little crevices and I'm sure there's still some, some and now I'm sure there's still some more throughout the aquarium but the important thing is is that what it looked like before and what it looks like now is night and day now going forward because these fish uh are not reef safe and they will pick on coral i think they've kind of decided because they're busy and they're always going away they have a lot going on they're very you know very, very busy people i think they're going to keep it really low key maybe a couple of enemies a couple of soft corals nothing too crazy in this tank Ma mainly focus on the fish um that's their pets that's what they love they they really care about them so um just keep it simple i'm going to try to get them a couple of little soft corals that are low maintenance but uh, I think as long, I think that should be good. I don't think those fish will mess with like something like a mushroom coral, to toadstool corals. Hopefully they'll be good there. Um, Star pops is taking off, but I like to add a little bit more color in this tank. And um, so yeah, I think they're just gonna keep it like this and just kind of enjoy the fish. Now, just because the Aptasia is gone in the display tank doesn't mean the Aptasia is gone completely. There's probably still a bunch in the overflow, which I'll check in a second. And then, you know, all through the piping of this tank and then probably down in the sump as well. Now, the next step is how do you get rid of that? Well, I don't think you'll ever really get rid of it 100%. The point is to manage it just like they've managed this right here, the display tank. So 
you know, you could possibly put some peppermint shrimp in the back compartment because this is a red sea. You know, this compartment lifts up right there and there's some space back there. You could probably get some peppermint shrimp back there and just let them kind of, you know, go uh, go off back there. And then down here in the sump, you could do the same thing as well. You could put some peppermints down there uh, and let them kind of, you know, don't feed them or anything. Let them eat the aptasia and let them do their thing down there. That might be an option. I don't think nudibranchs would work good in those spots just for the simple fact that, like, obviously the nudibranchs, the burger, yeah, nudibranchs in this display tank would get eaten by the uh, wrasse. And um, down here, I think they just get sucked up by the filtration in either one of those spots. So I think um, I've had success with putting peppermints in people's sumps before, and they've done a good job. Now, how do you get rid of it in the piping? Uh, you don't. You just manage it in the places where it counts, and where it really counts is right here in this display tank. As long as it's not hurting the corals, that's all that matters, and as long as it doesn't look like crazy, messy, and gross looking, that's all that matters. And this tank is looking um, so much better, and I'm really happy for the customer because, um, again, they love their fish, and they love this hobby, and uh, you know, I, I'm glad to see that they finally can get some a healthy a, a, a system up and the fish are doing good and I'd like to get them a couple more corals to just really make them happy so um, yeah that's the update on this aquarium I just wanted to kind of show you guys this is you know I was all for restarting the tank but if you're okay with just kind of limiting the type of corals you have uh, with just softies and some anemones then by all means you can manage it with fish it shouldn't be a problem and you know there's nothing wrong with that you don't have to have all these crazy corals and stuff like that uh, for a reef tank you can kind of keep it you know pretty standard and uh, easy maintenance, especially when you're on the go all the time. Um, but yeah, that's it. I just wanted to show you guys that. And uh, yeah, I'm, like again, I'm very happy for the customer. I'm glad that they were able to have success. So if you have an Aptasia situation in your tank and you're willing to maybe not have the, you know, all the corals, but some corals, uh, maybe try the climb butterfly. Uh, file fishes, uh, I'm more inclined to go for the climb butterfly. I, I really think they do a great job with Aptasia. So you can even see here in the sump, there is still some Aptasia there, but again, you just, you know, that's the reason why you keep the fish in the display tank. But if, again, if this is no pro problem with them down here in the sump, they're not bothering anything, um, but they're in the system still. So if you ever got rid of the fish, you know, they will come back. And if you put a couple peppermints down here in the refugium area, they, they, they get rid of the, those in no time, and at least then I'm out. But what you're not going to do is get rid of the ones that are growing in the, the PVC pipe and in the hoses. All right, let me know down in the comments what you guys think of that whole situation. Um, that's pretty impressive. We did not solve the Aptasia problem. It's still in the tank, but uh, I guess management at this point is the key. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a good one.